the rugged road, the quaint, unheard towns, the terrain that changes every half hour. The auto build headlines today team goes on a once in a lifetime epic journey. It is this thrill of being on the road, not for hours, but for days, for weeks and for night on end. As the great overland adventure maps out past new cities and towns across ever-changing terrain, every new day is a challenge and every day past is a memory to be cherished. The vehicle of choice for this journey is the Mercedes GLA 200 CDI and the support car is a GL350 CDI. I think you picked the perfect car, our new compact SUV, very robust to go on this very big trip. These cars had to be shipped to Frankfurt after being registered in India, decked up in their proper livery for this epic journey. The great overland adventure was flagged off at the Mercedes-Benz Stuttgart headquarters in Moringen, destination set for Pune in India, 17,800 kilometers away. Starting from Germany, the next 30 days, the GLA will forge its way through the East European countries of Czech Republic, Poland, Lithuania and Latvia. Crossing the border in Russia, it will be a constant eastward drive to explore the marvellous Russian cities till it reaches Siberia from where it will enter Kazakhstan. Travelling the vast barren highlands to reach Lake Balkhash, it will head west to cross picturesque Kyrgyzstan. Then turning south, just below Mongolia, the GLA team will drive along the Silk Route in China and turn southwest to reach Zhangmu and enter Nepal. From then on, it will be a straight drive southwest to the Golden Quadrilateral in India to bring the cars back home to Pune. We are going to head off to Prague. Prague is 450 kilometers. It's 5.15 in the evening, 5.30 now. It's almost dark, so it's probably be around 10, 11 by the time we reach Prague. Uh, probably have dinner along the way. But now begins the adventure, now begins the driving. So we are finally on the road. And it looks like we've got out of Stuttgart at peak traffic time. It's bumper to bumper traffic. The radio is saying it's uh, stop and go traffic for Zext kilometer. I don't know what Zext means in uh, German, but I think it's probably some 10 15 kilometers. stone lanes. I don't think we should be in here. We're going past the Charles Bridge. It's a historic monument in the city. Actually the best way to discover the city is by foot. So we'll take a small walk through the city and then we'll head out to Warsaw this evening. This is the Charles Bridge, a historical monument in the city. The city is behind us. Of course, we can't bring in the cars here. This is only a walking plaza. So we'll walk around the city, take in the sights and sounds. We got a lot of time in Prague.
This is day three of the great overland adventure and we are in Warsaw in Poland. This is old Warsaw, the old town, the historic center of the city. We'll take a walk around, we'll have a look at uh, what Warsaw is like. It's got a quaint Eastern European feel. It's not as developed or as bustling as uh, Western European cities. It's still got that old world charm to it that's uh, so attractive and so emotional. Day 4 of the Great Overland Adventure and we are at our 4th country. This is the Lithuanian border crossing. Today we head to Vilnius, which is the capital city of Lithuania. We are going to change the tyres of the cars, put on snow tyres because it's winter over here and you need it for Russia and for the countries that we are going to. Driving due east, it took the GLA team almost a day to get past the Russian borders, getting the paperwork sorted for the cars to continue on their drive. Day 5 and the marvellous city of St. Petersburg greeted the team in the most aristocratic way. St. Petersburg, this is probably the most beautiful and most historic city in the whole of Russia. Just look at this. The city takes your breath away. As we started rolling into St. Petersburg, we wanted to stop at every building. Everything is built in this old Soviet style of architecture. It's huge, massive, great monuments all over the place. But Vitoldas told us to come here. This is the old town square and it, it just takes your breath away. It's unbelievable. It's so beautiful. I don't want to carry on. I just want to spend weeks exploring St. Petersburg. So we've got a long drive now. We're heading to Moscow, which is 700 kilometers away. And it's already getting dark. It is 3 o'clock and it feels like it is 6, 7 in the evening. And this road is not really a road that you want to push on. The speed limit is 80 km an hour. It is for the most part a single carriageway with overtaking lanes, which are all very well marked out. But it's uh, murky conditions, it is pitting with rain. So you don't, want really, don't really want to push. Tomorrow is a Saturday, so hopefully there shouldn't be any of that legendary Moscow traffic.
behind me is the iconic red square with the church, the Kremlin. It's beautiful. It's well worth the drive. Driving through the Russian towns and cities, the GLA team was stopped by a bunch of cops. So this is the reason why we were stopped in Nizhny by the cops. The cars have become filthy, it's been raining, there's a lot of grit on the road. But we don't want to clean the cars because these cars look like expedition vehicles now. Only thing, get the number plate cleaned up let all the Russian cops know that these are cars registered in India, in Pune. Today we have a relatively easy drive. As we're heading east into Russia, the roads are now beginning to fall apart. It's quite bumpy. We are doing just 80 kilometers per hour. We can't go any faster. It's a single carriageway. There is a lot of traffic. And as we're heading east, the landscape is becoming more barren. It's becoming harsher. The winter is setting in. It's two in the afternoon and it's already dark. It's like seven in the evening. The sun is gone. The temperatures are five degrees, so it's cold. Nine days and 6,000 kilometers. After traversing through gorgeous Russian cities, Suresh hands the wheel over to Rahul, who will drive through beautiful barren landscapes of a very snowy Kazakhstan. This uh, place is like, uh, uh, in, in Russian, it's steep. In Lithuanian, it's steep. Thousands of kilometers, like for me, it's nothing around. The city of Astana is a bustling city with a lot of activity. Uh, we'll be driving through the city of Astana and bringing you sights and sounds so that you can see what is Astana and how the people manage this cold weather. We need to top up the windshield washer fluid. Now you cannot put any other windshield washer fluid in this country because the water will freeze up. As you can see, it's all cold. So we have a special mix which is a concentrate and it works till minus 20 degrees as you can see. So this won't uh, freeze up in, in this weather. And uh, we are good. We just need to add some water and uh, we are ready for the road. This morning when we've come to the cars, you can see that they are all snowed out. 
it started snowing and through the night it snowed and the cars are covered in snow We are somewhere between Astana and Almaty and we've taken a dirt trail of the main highway and a few kilometers uh, inside we have reached Balkash. Now Lake Balkash, you might be surprised to know, is the 13th largest continental lake in the world and stretches up to over 600 kilometers. That's a massive size for a lake and I think in this serene location it makes perfect sense to have a quick picnic on this great overland adventure. is Europe, that way is India. I tell you this because we have reached Almaty. Another 50 kilometers and we enter the city. And I tell you this because of the simple fact that we have reached the end of the first leg of the great overland adventure. Over 6,500 kilometers and we have done as of now. And there is a hell lot of road to cover ahead. But from Almaty, we hand over the cars to Yogendra and Shitij who will take them back to India. We are now in Almaty, the erstwhile capital of uh, Kazakhstan and as you can see, the scenery is changing. From the barren plains, we are moving into the mountains and this here is at Kokto Bay, one of the uh, vantage points which overlooks Almaty city and we have a beautiful amazing view behind us of the Tian Shan mountain range and the city uh, behind. Farewell to Almaty, heading east to Bishkek, the GLA team is now on the Silk Road. Driving past these mountain ranges, like the ancient travellers of yore, this famed route through which caravans travelled will lead the GLA to its final destination in India. Bishkek today, the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Behind me is the uh, statue of the founder of uh, the country, Manas. This is his statue and on the left is the main national flag. And uh, two soldiers guard it, they keep it with pride. It's a country of modest means. This is the main square. And now we'll be heading towards the mountains and exploring the beauty of the country.
Leaving Bishkek behind, the GLA team climbed the main branch of the Tien Shan range to find landscapes similar to Ladakh and Spiti in India. Snaking up the mountains, the roads were good and the scenery spectacularly so. The GLA team reached one of the main staging points of the Silk Route, the city of Narin. Bye bye. We should like all of you. Without much sightseeing and bidding a quick farewell to their Kyrgyz guide, the GLA team left Narin and set off on the biggest day of the drive. Day 15 meant crossing another international border, one that would take the adventure right into the lair of the Chinese dragon. Crossing into the People's Republic of China marked one of the high points of the great overland adventure. We are headed to uh, the Turgut Pass, which is the border between Kyrgyzstan and China. We've been uh, driving through this uh, beautiful landscape, uh, pristine snow, white rolling hills. Earlier we saw the Tian Shan range, which was high mountains, and now these are slightly lower hills. And although it seems like a plain valley, we are still at a pretty high 2,500 meter altitude. Next week, Watch the GLA drive through exotic cities and destinations like Kashgar, Hami, Danhuang and Lhasa in Tibet. Will the GLA team reach Mount Everest? Will they see the Potala? Join us next week and be a part of the great overland adventure.